بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم لیڈیز اینڈ جینٹل مین دس از پروفیسر ڈاکٹر فخر الاسلام فرام پاکستان اسٹڈی سینٹر یونیورسٹی آف پشاور لیڈیز اینڈ جینٹل مین ان ٹو ڈیز پریزنٹیشن آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو گیو یو سم ڈیٹیلس اباؤٹ دا بیسک ڈیموکریسی سسٹم وچ از کارڈ ایز بی ڈی سسٹم This system was introduced by General Muhammad Ayub Khan uh, through a presidential order uh, which was titled as Basic Democracies Order 1959. Uh, the objectives of this uh, system were two. First one was that it was supposed to function as local self-government system and as it is clear that the local self-government system is the one which provides basic facilities and amenities to the citizens at their doorsteps or at local level. The second objective was that it was also used as electoral college for the election of the president and for the election of provincial and national assemblies. It was also used for holding of referendum in the country. So people are of the view that it was actually designed to be utilized as electoral college and the local self-government services of this system was just a byproduct. In other words, Ayub Khan had, had devised this system just to perpetuate his rule in Pakistan. Uh, under this uh, Basic Democracies Order 1959, initially the total number of members in this system was fixed as 80,000 of whom 40,000 from the West Pakistan and 40,000 were from the East Pakistan. In between, this uh, number was increased through another order and the total number was raised from 80,000 to 120,000 And once again, the whole number was equally divided between the two wings of the country. Now, we come to uh, another detail of this system that this system was comprised of four tiers. Number one was Union Council. Uh, these Union Councils Uh, were either uh, in the rural areas, they were called as union councils. But when it came to the town areas and cities, then uh, the term town and union committees was used. So this was the first tier. Uh, the second tier was uh, Tehsil Council. Uh, but it should be noted that since there was no tehsil in East Pakistan, therefore, in that wing of the country, this system was, the second tier was called as Thana Council because it was established and founded on the basis of Thana or police jurisdiction. The third tier, which was very much powerful in this whole system, was the district councils. And the fourth and last tier was divisional councils. Uh, it should also be noted that initially there was a fifth tier as well, and that was called as Provincial Development Council. But that system was later on deleted or slashed uh, because it was felt at that time that provincial assemblies were enough 
to perform that role of provincial development bodies therefore the fifth tier was uh, not included in the system so just to repeat this system was based on four tiers or stages the first one was union council they were called as a town committees uh, and municipal committees in the urban areas the second tier was tehsil council and that tehsil council was renamed as thana council in the east pakistan the fourth one was district council and the uh, the third one sorry was district council and the fourth one was divisional council now uh, we would like to uh, discuss these tiers in a little bit detail uh as far as the union councils were concerned as i mentioned that in the rural areas they were called as union councils and in the urban areas uh, they were called as uh, town or municipal committees uh, at the base of this system the union council which consisted of a chairman and usually about 15 members they were working it had both elected and nominated members two third of the members of the union council were elected representatives and one third consisted of non official members nominated by the government it should be noted that these nominations were in all tiers of the bd system and people have severely criticized the nomination and especially the nomination of official members in different tiers and bodies of the uh, bd system uh, but the nomination from the union council was abolished after a year or two that is in 1962 so uh, till the end of this system union council then remained a fully elected chair of the bd system while in the other chairs that is tehsil district and divisional councils the nomination continued the members of the union council were elected by the people from their respective unions on the basis of universal idle franchise the chairman of the union council was elected by the members from amongst themselves in a way it was a par- at par with the erstwhile union board with minor differences the elected representatives of the union council were called the basic democrats and the total number of union councils in pakistan at that time was 7300 the union council had been entrusted with variety of functions such as agriculture small industry community development and uh, also food production etc it also maintained law and order through the rural police and had been given judicial power to try minor civil and criminal cases through its conciliation courts the union councils were given the responsibility of planning and implementation of rural public works programs for construction of roads bridges and culverts irrigation channels and embankments the union council was also empowered to levy taxes impose rates of tolls and also uh, different type of fees uh, the first tier that is union council was followed by the second tier which was tehsil council and as i mentioned in the beginning that for in the east pakistan since there was no administrative unit which we 
called as uh, Taisil. Therefore, in the East Pakistan, this tier was organized on the basic basis of police station and were called as Thana councils. This tier also had some uh, ex officio representative members, official members and non-official members. There was no election at all in this tier. The representative members of were the chairman of the union councils and town committees. I mean, uh, in a particular tehsil, uh, so many union councils and uh, urban union councils and town committees existed. So the chairman of all those committees and union councils were ex officio or they were members on the virtue of their designation. The official members were the representative of various nation building departments of Etasil or Etana and this number was fixed by the district magistrate of the concerned district. The total number of official members could not in any case exceed the number of non-official members. The council was headed by the divisional, uh, sub-divisional uh, officer SDO uh, who was the ex officio chairman. It was really strange that in this chair, the chairman or the controlling authority was a government servant. In his absence, the circle officer development would preside meetings of the Tehsil or Thana councils. The Thana and Tehsil council uh, was mostly coordinative and supervisory body. All the activities of the union councils and town committees falling within its jurisdiction were coordinated by Tehsil or Thana council. All development plans prepared by the union councils and town committees were coordinated by these councils. Uh, it followed the direction of the district council and uh, you know work under the direct supervision of the uh, district council. The third, and as I mentioned, the uh, most uh, uh, influential and powerful tier of the system was district council. Uh, first, let's see what was its strength. It consisted of one chairman, official and non-official members. The number of members would not exceed then the figure of 40. The chairman of Thana or Tasil council were its members. And other official member were, members were drawn from district level officers of development department and an equal number of non-official members. At least 50% of non-official members was drawn from amongst the chairmen of union councils and town committees. The district magistrate uh, acted as chairman of the council while the vice chairman was elected by the elected members of the council. So once again, a bureaucrat was made chairman of the council while the vice president or his deputy was elected from amongst the elected representatives. In the absence of the chairman district council, the vice chairman who was an elected person had to perform such other functions assigned by the chairman. At that time, there were 74 district councils in both wings of Pakistan. The district council was most important chair in the basic democracy system. It was successor organization to the district board, which was a system before the introduction of BD system. So far as the composition of the council was concerned, it regressed beyond 
its 1885 position uh, when 25 percent members were nominated. The district council under the BD system had been entrusted with uh, three types of functions. Number one, compulsory. Number two, optional. And number three, coordinative. Some of the compulsory functions included construction of public roads, culverts, bridges, maintenance of primary schools, plantation and preservation of trees, regulation of public ferries, and improvement of public health. As far as the optional functions were concerned, these included education, culture, socio-economic welfare, and public works. In addition, the district council was also given broad functions such as agriculture, uh, uh, supervision of agriculture, industry, community development, promotion of national reconstruction, and development of cooperative societies. Coordination of all activities of local council within the district was also responsibility of this third tier of the BD system. The council was supposed to formulate schemes and projects taken by nation building departments and make suggestions for further improvement and development and recommend them to the divisional council and other concerned authorities. Uh, this is all about the district council which was the third tier of the BD system. Now we come to the final, uh, the last tier of the BD system which was divisional council. It was the fourth tier and it was least important functionally uh, but it was simply an advisory body at that level. Uh, the divisional commissioner was ex officio chairman of the divisional council. Once again, a bureaucrat was brought and was appointed as chairman of a system which was uh, a democratic system. It had both official and non-official uh, members. The maximum number of members was 45. Official members consisted of chairman of district councils of the concerned division and representatives of development departments. The total number of divisional councils at that time in Pakistan was 16. So this is all about the four important tiers of the basic democracies system. Now, as I mentioned that, the most important function of these councils was to act as electoral college for election of the president and assemblies, as well as these members were supposed to be voters in any referendum held in the country. So, uh, this system was used as, electro, as an electoral college on a couple of occasions. For example, the first and foremost use of this system was on 14 February 1960. It was uh, introduced in Pakistan in 1959 and after a couple of months, uh, General Ayub Khan held a presidential referendum in the country is a result of which he legitimized his, himself as president of Pakistan. So the first use was the referendum for election of the president on 14 February 1960. Then in 1962 when the constitution was promulgated, the first elections to the National Assembly and Provincial Assemblies were held and only the BD system members were given the right of vote. The rest of the nation was just a silent spectator. The most important and controversial use 
of the uh, BD system was once again in the presidential election which was held on 2nd January 1965. This was an election in which Ayub Khan had to uh, compete against the sister of the founder of the nation, uh, Miss Fatma Jinnah was uh, the opposition candidate. Uh, she was very popular among the people and she attracted thousands and in some cases, you know, millions of people to her public meetings. But those public meetings were of no use because the, the right of vote was exercised by only a limited number of BD system. Just to review the system, I would say that the first objective that is to function is local self-government bodies. I would say that that aspect of the system was a success. Because under that uh, objective, uh, in almost all union councils of Pakistan, uh, spacious buildings were constructed uh, which were of the same architecture throughout Pakistan and those buildings were used as office and halls for holding of jergas and other cultural and social activities. Uh, the drinking water were supplied and the drainage system even in rural areas was uh, improved and Similarly, in cities, uh, facilities were provided to the citizens. But as, but as far as the other objective is concerned, that is, it was used to uh, put curbs on democracy and deprive people, the general public, from the right of vote. This was severely criticized by the people, and they said that it was just to perpetuate the non-democratic rule of Ayub Khan. Uh, so this is a, 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 you know, a, a very brief review of the system that it had both good and bad aspects and it is always in all the systems that on one hand a system gives you some benefits but on the other hand it is harmful to the interest of the citizens. So this is all about the democratic system which is called as basic democracy system and if you are interested to uh, study in detail so my book uh, book written by professor dr fakhrul islam in 2018 constitutional development in pakistan may be of some help for the students scholars and those people who are trying to appear the uh, in the competitive examinations thank you and allah hafiz